So please note that our session today is being recorded. Um, right now, I'm currently presenting in a um, view from what the teacher would see when the presentation is in student paste in the Google Classroom. Um, if this is too distracting, please let me know and I can just go into a, a regular presentation so that you will not see the items on the side. So if, if it's too distracting and you would um, prefer just to see one slide at a time rather than the whole teacher dashboard, please let us know and I can adjust. So as I had mentioned, um, we are going to be working in classroom today. So if everybody could please go to the tab with their classroom and join our ILE PD class. So right now we're opening up another tab and we're going to Google Classroom. When you get there, please type in the join code, which is A2X3XFB. Under assignments, you should see an assignment for today. I believe it's the first or second assignment down, and you will be able to um, join the presentation in a student paced mode. So this is what your students would see if you assigned the um, Pear Deck to them through their Google Classroom. And what I'm presenting on my screen is what you, the teacher, would see as your students are working in classroom. So I can see um, up at the top, these are my students. And I can click to see the uh, roster and see who has joined. Okay, I'll give just about 30 seconds more if you want to join the classroom. As a reminder, um, open up another tab for classroom and type in the join code, which is A2X3XFB. You'll be able to join the Pear Deck, which is currently in student paced mode. And this is what your students will see when they log into Google Classroom and um, open up a pair deck that you've pushed out to them. So as I said earlier, um, today we're going to cover some Pear Deck basics. So we're going to be talking about what Pear Deck is, how to get the Pear Deck add-on, how to create with Pear Deck, how to share to Classroom, and um, how to publish the takeaways feature, which is a really great uh, resource for your students. I did just see a question pop up in the chat. Um, Valerie, in the student um, view, we're currently on slide six. It's up to you if you would like to follow along um, in Google Classroom or if you would like to toggle back 
and follow along with me in the Google Meet. Um, when we get further into the presentation, you will need to be in your classroom so that you can engage in some of the activities. Um, but right now you can follow along either way in either the Google Meet or in the Google Classroom. I hope that answered your question. Okay, so what is Pear Deck? If you haven't used Pear Deck before, um, simply put, it's an interactive slide deck. So it takes your existing um, presentations and creates 100% student engagement because every single student in your class has an opportunity to interact with the slide deck and provide you with feedback on their learning. Um, in our instructional guide, engagement is mentioned more than 38 times, so um, we know that that's something we definitely want our students to, to be doing, and they want to be engaged as well. They don't want to just passively um, sit and watch something. It gives every student a voice um, because every student can access the Pear Deck on their own, and um, can respond individually, every single student in your class is participating rather than just that handful of students that tend to be a little bit more vocal than others. And you're able to individually monitor all 35 students' responses, or if you have more students, more than 35. So we're going to start talking about how to get started with Pear Deck. Again, you can follow along um, or you can open up another tab and do the steps with me or you can go back and watch this video a little bit later. It's up to you how you want to go through the next uh, couple of slides. So in order to get started with Pear Deck, you would go to www.peardeck.com. There you will be able to log in. So there's a button that says log in, and you would sign in with your Google Riverside Unified account. Okay. When you first sign in, you will see um, the dashboard. There are a lot of great tools and resources there that you can explore. Um, if you're joining me for tomorrow's Pear Deck session, which is a little bit more advanced, I will be uh, discussing some of these tools tomorrow. But the dashboard is um, really a great place to explore and to get ideas. One thing you'll want to do um, when you're here and you've just created your account is go ahead and scroll all the way to the bottom of your dashboard to adjust your settings. So on that first page that I just showed you with all the great tools, you'll scroll down to the bottom and click on your settings button. Um, some of the resources that I would like to um, point out to you are turning on your Google Classroom feature and then also turning on the takeaways. And you can adjust um, your settings as needed, what's going to work best for your students and their needs. The takeaway feature um, is a really great tool to turn on because it allows you to push out um, some takeaways to all of your students individually. And I'll be demonstrating that towards the end of today's presentation. So once you've adjusted your settings and you've gotten your account all set up, you need to get the Pear Deck add-on. So you'll want to open up a new tab 
go to Google Slides and open up a blank slide deck. Up at the top, you'll want to click on Add-ons. From the drop-down menu, choose Get Add-ons. The G Suite Marketplace will pop up. Go ahead and find Pear Deck. It looks like this. It's uh, yellow and it has Perry the Pear on it. Accept the permissions and you now have the Pear Deck add-on. So now you can start using Pear Deck um, in, to create your slides or to add on to existing slide decks. So now you're ready to create. I'm going to talk a little bit um, now about how to create uh, slides, either from an existing slide deck that you have or from um, scratch. If you would like me to um, demonstrate any of this at the um, end of the the slide deck or as we're going through please type a comment in the uh, chat bar so that we can um, show you that so you can start with a slide deck that you already have or you can create a new one you'll want to go into your google slides And once you have the Google Slides open, you'll go up to the, the top and select Add-ons. From the drop-down menu, you'll select Pear Deck and then open Pear Deck Add-on. So this is what you're doing when you are in a Google Slide after you've added the Pear Deck Add-on. this um, sidebar will appear. So once you've activated the add-on and you're in your Google Slides, you will see this bar pop up. It pops up on the right-hand side of your screen. There are some ready-made templates that you can just click on and um, Pear Deck makes it very easy because you can look at the templates and then just pop them into your presentation. And there are also some interactive questions that you can add to your existing slide deck. So I know when I was in the classroom, I had a lot of um, presentations that weren't necessarily interactive, um, or if they were interactive, it was more for a whole group or my students were writing something on a small whiteboard and holding it up for me. This allows them to um, engage with you directly from their Chromebook. And I'm going to have you answer some of the different question types. If you would like for me um, to demo any of this, again, please type in a comment for Nadine, and we can go over some um, real life demonstrations at the end. So we're going to explore the question types right now. So the next few slides are going to be interactive. So this is where you are definitely going to want to go into Classroom and access that um, Pear Deck that's in your classroom so that you can interact and answer the questions. You can tell when a slide is interactive because you'll see Perry the Pear at the bottom and this gray bar and it will always have um, instructions for the student if they're supposed to um, do a drag and drop if they're supposed to write a response um, it will always give your students some type of instructions so i want you to take a few moments now 
slides 25 through 30 are all um, interactive. So take a few minutes to answer. If you're looking at the presentation, if you're in Google Meets, what you're seeing on the screen is what the teacher sees from their view. So what's in Google Meets is the teacher facing view. I can see my students, I can see where they're at, what they're answering. And what you're seeing in Google Classroom is what the student would see. And right now, what I'm showing to you on um, Google Meet is not what you would present to your students. So this is a, a private teacher-facing page. I'm just showing you this so that you can um, see what the teacher would see. And I see we had a question. from Valerie. Yes, once you write a response in the slide, you can um, go ahead and move on to the next one and answer it. So as you're working through, Pear Deck is um, collecting and saving your responses. Yes, Wendy, students can go back and edit um, their responses as long as the Pear Deck is open for them. So you see down here we have this um, button that says end. Once the teacher ends things, the students can no longer um, access the Pear Deck. So it's very important that you leave the presentation uh, running on your computer. You can go and make dinner, you can go on a walk, you can do whatever. Um, just leave it um, open for them, even if you are going to be closing your device, uh, because once you click end, they can no longer go back in and edit. And right now I'm just clicking through to look at some of my um, different students' responses. As a teacher, if you see something that you really want to make sure that you share um, with your class, you can go ahead and star it. And these will be ones that are um, displayed when you show responses. It's always a good idea when you're in this teacher dashboard to review their answers first um, before you just present everything to the class because you don't want to get any surprises from students um, or project anything that uh, might be embarrassing to them because perhaps they didn't answer the question correctly or didn't understand what they were supposed to do. So when you're in this teacher dashboard view, you can review all the answers, you can star particular ones that you would like to um, to share with the class. 
So I could click show responses. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to end it in order to show you all the responses. All right, so if we go back to our um, presentation, I wanted to point out something on the draggables. So for question 30, um, you were able to drag and drop some punctuation marks. So it's a great um, checking for understanding for uh, grammar activities. You can customize and change your draggable. So it's not just punctuation marks that you can um, show. It can be um, dots, it can be icons to indicate places on a map. There's lots of different um, options you can choose on draggables. You can also customize the draggable color and change the size of the draggables. So now I wanted to show you some features for sharing in Classroom. So once you've created your um, Pear Deck, you can go ahead and share it in your Google Classroom. So what I did was um, I did a student paste mode, which this is what you would want to use if you were putting it into Classroom for your students to work at um, at their own pace. So you're going to start the lesson through that sidebar that we saw earlier. So you would click the green start lesson button. You would not click the normal present that you would if you were presenting this in the classroom. Click on student paste activity. You will get some options. Um, one of the options is share to classroom. So you'll click on share to classroom and then choose the class that you want to share this to. Create an assignment and then click on the go button. So this will push it out as an assignment um, to your students and it will go in that um, assignments section in Classroom. Go ahead and give it a title and then click the purple assign button and then you'll get the message that you've posted to your classroom. So you can stop the student paste mode and switch to teacher paste by clicking here. And like I said earlier, end ends the session for students. So they're no longer able to participate once you select end. So for the duration of the time that students have to participate, you want to make sure that you're leaving this open for them. They can uh, go in at any time that it's open and um, create their responses. They can also go back and edit. But once you click end, that's it. Mm -hmm. 
So the next thing you, that will happen when you click end is it will, this box will pop up to end this session. So you can go ahead and give it a name. You can give this um, session a name. So if at any time you wanted to go back to the session, it will populate in PeardeC.com. So you could go back and access this particular session. You'll see underneath, it says publish student takeaways. That was that um, item that we turned on in the very beginning in our settings tab. So takeaways pushes out, and I'm going to demonstrate this in just a minute. It pushes out um, to each of your students a copy of the presentation and their individual responses. It also um, has some areas for them to reflect on the assignment. And they can get this directly in their Google Classroom if you've turned these on. So. Um, it's a nice way for them to reflect on their work, um, to have an additional copy of the presentation. Um, you know, I'm thinking now of when I was in the classroom, this might have been a great tool um, for my AVID students that I could push that out to them. And then they could do their Cornell note taking right on the document. Um, with reflecting on their own answers and what they learned. So there's a lot of great um, uses for that. A few helpful hints. Um, go ahead and start with slide decks that you've already made. Um, it's very, very easy to add uh, questions on or to insert some of the template slides. So don't think you have to create everything from scratch. You can start with what you already have. Um, if you have PowerPoints, you can always upload those to Google Drive and um, turn them into slide decks that you can add your Pear Deck to. The pre-made templates are a huge time saver. Uh, they're divided up into beginning, during, end. And there are some critical thinking um, activities that you can pop in. Not every single slide needs to be interactive. Sometimes you just need to get information out to students and they don't particularly need to interact with that. So don't think that every single slide has to have a question or something for them to answer. Before presenting, open the Pear Deck in present mode on a phone or a tablet. Join the presentation and run through it. And the biggest tip is just to try. It might not be perfect um, the first time, but so what? You're, you're learning and building your teaching toolbox. So just try. Paradox is very easy to work with. And if you make a mistake, oh well, you know, we have our growth mindset and, um, you know, everything is just an opportunity to learn. I did link in some resources for you. So these are some interactive tutorials that you can uh, look at that will show you how to um, use the templates, how to create different question slides like the text slide, multiple choice, uh, drawing. There's um, a tutorial for students to get started. And then a couple of videos on how to create interactive slides and how to use the student paste mode. And before we go to feedback, I want to show you that um, takeaways feature. So I'm going to end this session. So once I end it, you will not be able to answer anything else in your Google Classroom. So we're going to call this Paradeck and 
classroom 42920. And I had already um, set my settings for publish student takeaways. I'm going to click save and end session. And right now my um, Pear Deck is thinking it's finding the link for takeaways so that it can push it out to you. And it is taking a long time this morning. <laughs> Okay, let's try publishing again. And this is what I meant by giving us all grace in the beginning of the presentation. Okay, so it looks like it is not um, working this morning. So we'll return to Google Slides and I will try publishing it again um, a little bit later. And if it publishes successfully, you should get both an email with your takeaways and a um, notification in classroom with your takeaways. So I wanted to um, thank you very much for attending today. And here's our link for feedback. And I will go ahead and open it up for questions or if you wanted to um, see any demonstrations. Nadine, are there any uh, questions that need answering? Yes, I have a question um, in regards to where will the recording be housed and accessible later? I know they, they can access the bit.ly. Yes. I just wanted to make sure um, that they know where to find the recording for the future as well. Um, yes, I will actually, once the uh, recording has been um, edited, I will email it out to everybody. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Was there anything else? We have a question about inserting videos into the Pear Deck. Yes, so you can insert um, a video just like you would normally in a Google slide. Um, and then you can um, create a question around that. And then another great question came in asking, if they assign a Pear Deck on Monday, but it's not due until Friday, do they leave it open and running until Friday? Yes. Do they also then have to leave their computer open and running, or will it work in the background? It will work in the background. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, thank you everybody um, so much for joining us this morning. I hope that today's uh, session was helpful. I will be hosting another session tomorrow um, 
with some more advanced features, I will be going over how to share your Pear Deck um, live during a Google Meet and also show you some of the um, new features that Pear Deck just came out with in the last couple of weeks. One of them they just came out with this week. So I hope that you will be joining us again. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to email either myself or Nadine and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. What time is it tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow is 9 a.m. as well. And do we have to sign up for that one? I'm not sure. Uh, we'll end up. Um, you know, there was a sign up, Rachel. I can... Uh... I'm not sure if I'm signed up for that one or not. Okay. I know I uh, could you go ahead and type into the uh, chat that I can add you? Do you think that we're going to be knowledgeable enough to join tomorrow if we're pretty new at this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, tomorrow's just showing you some additional features, and um, but you should be good to go, Valerie. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. I will go ahead and make sure you get added uh, to the invitation for tomorrow. Thank you. I've had Pear Deck before, but I just haven't used it. So this was like a refresher for me. Oh, good. So, so I've never created slides of my own. Uh -huh. I've always had like slides before. Like, so I was trying to figure out how I could um, make them so I guess that's where I'm confused about how to um, use Pear Deck because I've always had slides already made. Like I haven't made them. Okay. So are are they in your um, Google Slides though? Well, they're like things from uh, like publishers and other people. Does that make sense? Yes not not stuff that i've made uh-huh so would i be able to use pear deck in that or not it would have to be stuff i made to use pear deck hmm i think you would be able to use pear deck as long as it's in google slides okay Nadine, have you um, used it with any publisher slides before or any um, other types of slides? My recommendation for that would be to um, like upload those slides and insert them into your own mm -hmm. Google presentation or even like pull from those and recreate it under your own um, and then convert, go to the add ons and do the Pear Deck that way. Because being able to pull directly from the publisher, they don't always use Google Slides. A lot of times yeah. they use um, something else. Yeah. yeah. And it's not even PowerPoint where PowerPoint automatically, when you open it in Google Slides, it'll convert it to Google Slides for you. They use like um, some sort of editor or illustrator or Adobe feature. So you would just be able to like pull that information and use it to create your own 